Hello guitar folks. Uh, we had a great class today and I just wanted to give a quick little recap of that. Before I do, since this is the last uh, class before break, there's a couple of announcements just to, to be sure of. First of all, uh, there's three weeks until our next class, which is the first day back from break, which means that that could be a really fruitful time or really bummer of a time depending upon how much time we spend on on our instrument I know folks travel I know folks have lots of plans and whatnot but this is a perfect opportunity to get in lots of minutes um, you only get better the more you do something and this is certainly true with uh, playing a musical instrument so I'm encouraging folks to practice a whole bunch over break when we get when we get that free time um, the best way to do that is doing it every day or almost every day. Uh, I've made a practice challenge. Lunch with Mr. K. If you can get between today and the first day back, 450 minutes. 450. It's a lot, but it is three weeks. Um, so, if you get 450 minutes, you can schedule a lunch with me and a couple friends, and I'll probably bake some cookies or cake or something to, to bring along. Second announcement is this. Now is the perfect time, about halfway through the year, to, do, to consider a couple of things. First of all, if you don't already have a guitar tuner, I have one that looks like this. It's simply a clip-on tuner that indicates, has an indicator dial, uh, to tell me if the, the string is in tune or not. I use this daily. I use this probably at least 12 times a day. My strings will go in and out of tune depending upon the kids coming in and out of the classroom, bringing in cold air, warm air, whatever, whatever have you. And so I'm always tuning my guitar, fine tuning it to make sure it's perfect. Um, this particular one, and there's lots of other ones like this, this one's called Snark. Um, it just happens to be the one that, that I got for Christmas last year. It only costs about 12 bucks. So uh, if grandma sends you know, you a check from Idaho or something like that and you don't know what to spend it on, consider a tuner. The other thing is taking your guitar into the store wherever you got it, be it Danny Ray's Music or Guitar Center or any of the other local places, and considering investing in a set of strings. Um, most of us don't change our strings all that often, but it is an important maintenance uh, issue for most guitar players. Uh, I tend to change mine about every three months, maybe about four, four times a year, maybe more if I'm playing more. Um, but for students here, certainly twice a year is probably sufficient unless you're spending six or seven hours a week practicing then probably more often as you can see these strings have lost their luster they're not shiny anymore and the shinier the strings are the brighter they're gonna sound at least in my experience and the more dull that they are the more dull they're gonna sound um, usually you don't notice it until you put on a new set of strings and go wow that sounds fantastic um, the kind that I've kind of stuck with for a long time are these that are made by Martin, the Martin Marquis strings. I think they're about seven bucks. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, Guitar Center, wherever. You don't need to spend a lot of money on guitar strings. Just change them every once in a while. I know that Guitar Center also offers the service of changing your guitar strings for you. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, I think it costs about 12 bucks, and it's well worth every penny to not have to go through the frustration of trying to learn how to do that uh, on your own. But uh, that's just a suggestion. If you want to spend a couple dollars and take care of those things, that would put your guitar in good working order. Okay, now on to the more important stuff, playing. If throughout the break um, you find that you're, you're playing really well and you want to record something and send it to me, um, 
you can do that in one of two ways. You can, of course, record it on your phone and send it uh, via email. Sometimes those files get kind of large. The other way is what I'm doing right now. This is called Screencast-O-Matic. Um, ask mom and dad to help you out, but Screencast-O-Matic is one of many free uh, websites and apps from the Google Chrome store where you can uh, record video and audio and, and save it either to YouTube or to Google Drive or just email it, what have you. So I just wanted to share that with you. There's the, uh, the web address in case you're proud of something that you would like to share. I'm going to take you to my Google Drive where, not there, but rather our MIDI for Kids resources and the Christmas books. And I sent this uh, a while back back about three weeks ago. Uh, all the kids had it today, except for one. You know who you are. <laughs> Anyhow, we've been working on reading a couple of these. Uh, pretty much spent most of our day today on Jolly Old St. Nick on page 31 here. Just a few tips. First of all, Remember that the top line here of the tablature is the first string, and the bottom line here is the sixth string. So it goes on one, two, three, four, five, six. At the beginning of class today, I just hollered out different strings and different frets and had the kids play. Like, for instance, if you are a kid and you've got your guitar ready to play right now, here is what we'll do. I'll call out a string and a fret. First string, open third string open, third string second fret, second string first fret, second string third fret, first string open, first string second fret, first string third fret. Some of you probably noticed we played the whole scale there. I know that it can be annoying However, if you can imagine somebody in your head, maybe me, hollering out those frets and numbers, it will certainly help you out. I'm going to play a little bit of Jolly Old St. Nicholas. You're welcome to play along with me. See what happens. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be able to play without looking too much. Five, six, seven, eight. How'd you do? Hopefully pretty good. Now how about I accompany you? I'll play the chords. You play the melody. Ready? Here we go now. make a nice little recording. Um, so that's one way to practice these songs. Look at the tablature and play, a, play along with the melodies. The other way, the other challenge for us over the course of the break is to go to the last page here. We've got our chord dictionary. Now, reading the chords and reading the tablature is super duper similar. It's just the orientation of the, uh, the two. For instance, the 
the tablature is horizontal here, whereas the, the chord uh, dictionary is vertical. So for instance, they mark the chords as if the neck of the guitar is up like so. And the numbers at the bottom down here, or over here, indicate the fingers. Not the frets, but the fingers. First finger being pointer, second, third, fourth, and so on and so forth. So we went down, we checked out this G chord here. What that's going to look like if the guitar was vertical, first finger on the second fret here of the, sec of the fifth string, second finger on the third fret of the sixth string, and reaching back behind here, the third finger on the third fret of the first string. But we don't play like that, we play like so. So what that means is you kind of have to, uh, let's see if I can get in the shot there, you have to you kind of envision it, okay? You can put it vertically if you want, but we, uh, we looked at several chords here. We looked at G, we looked at C, we looked at E major. All these top ones are major chords. We went down to the minor chords. We circled the A minor chord. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we circled any others. We circled the D7 over here. Many of our songs are going to have those chords in there. Um, some we can even leave out. Um, but for instance, oh, let's look up. A, let's look at a good one here. How about "Away in a Manger"? Ooh. So if I was going to play the chords along here. Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. And really what you can do is, is just strum those chords. so on and so forth. If you know the tune, it's even more helpful. Um, I would encourage folks uh, <laughs> the students to pick a song that they like, that they can sing well, and try to strum those chords along. If you want to find one that's you know easier and work on that, that's fine. If you want a challenge, look for ones that have an E7 or an A7 in there and stretch your learning a little bit. And then uh, if you do really well, if you're proud of it, take a video, send it this way. Um, so there's my, well, I was going to say two cents, but at almost 13 minutes, that's a lot more sense than that. Anyways, I hope you have a great break. A happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and all of those other celebrations that you might have. Uh, I hope that maybe you'll share the gift of music with one another with your families as well. So I'm going to sign off for about three weeks here. We'll see you when we get back. Bye-bye.